Gourmet to Stay, episode four. You know, this week was my anniversary with my wife, so I decided I would do one of her favorite dishes, Hot Pot. Yeah. Ow. You got a shiny hiney and a handle I can't handle. You're so seductive and conductive, girl. Not that kind of hot pot. This is a Sichuan style, spicy hot pot. It's a really good meal to have with your friends, family. It's just a fun experience. But we can't just do a regular hot pot because that wouldn't be in line with our channel. So we're doing a hot pot fondue. Yeah, we're going a little bit food mad scientist here, but anyway, let's get cooking. Well, hot pot's easy enough. You just start off with one of the many store-bought, pre-made, ah, oh, come on. You know I'm not gonna be that easy on myself. We're gonna start with a homemade vegetable stock, make that into hot pot soup, and make that into a fondue. We got a lot of work on our hands. Now many good soup bases are started with this exact trio. It's called mirepoix. Onions, celery, carrots, it just sets up for a really good vegetable stock. But from there you can put in whatever vegetables you like. I chose some portobello mushrooms, and I also went with a head of fennel, but uh, I actually forgot to film myself cutting it. Now over some medium heat, we're gonna start with our mirepoix. Just break it up a little bit and uh, let it cook. I threw some oil in over top just to help with the browning. Then you're gonna wanna break a garlic clove in half. Ah, uh, no, I cut it, but uh, you can throw it in skin and all. It'll all be filtered out the end. Then we'll add my mystery fennel. It's a bit of a strong flavor, so it, you don't have to add it if you don't want. I just thought it would be more robust. Once it comes to a boil, we're going to put the lid on, turn down the heat, and let it simmer for about 45 minutes. While we wait for the stock, let's soak our peppers. These are Thai chilies. I filtered out our finished stock into a white bowl just so you could see that color. Very nice rich brown color. And now we'll turn that vegetable stock into hot pot soup using some garlic, ginger, spices, and of course those peppers that we soaked. This part of the process is all about just building layers of flavor. We're gonna saute up our spices, garlic, ginger, and then add some bean paste. Now this fermented bean paste is very salty, so just be aware that you might not have to add too much salt the rest of the way because of this paste. you're about to finish the process you can add some more peppers to make it spicier I like a nice red spicy soup usually a hot pot dish like this would have two kinds of soup but we're gonna use one side for the fondue this is what we'll be cooking in that soup but before we do let's make some dipping sauce for it My wife loves the sesame paste dipping sauce, but sesame paste is very thick, so make sure you use hot soup to mix it with so that it doesn't turn all grainy. This will help keep a very nice consistency. Once the 
soup reaches a rolling boil, you can start cooking your meats, vegetables, seafood in there. For the meats, it'll only take a few seconds before they're ready. Something thicker like a potato might take a few minutes. It's also good to have a hot kettle of water standing by because the soup does slowly evaporate and you can fill up the sides with it. Now it's time to make our hot pot soup into fondue. We're using cheddar and Gruyere cheese. In this shot, I greatly underestimated how much cheese I would need. There's so much soup in there and ended up needing about a block of each. We're gonna start this process by straining out everything from that soup. We're using the side that was unused because you really don't wanna eat hot pot soup that's been cooked in. It has a lot of nitrates and sodium and stuff that you just don't really want. So this unused side, we're gonna add the cheese slowly, whisking the whole time. One of the issues with hot pot fondue is that you can't run both sides at the same time because after the cheese is done cooking you need to turn it down so it won't burn. Like I said I needed way more cheese than expected even a little cornstarch slurry just to thicken it up. So let's dip in some of our hot pot cooked meats and see how it tastes. It was actually pretty delicious and my wife loved it too and she doesn't even like cheese but you know what it's just a little bit too much effort when hot pot itself is so good. You got a shiny hiney and a handle I can't handle. You're so seductive and conductive, girl.